Let's compare Twisby Eco to Twisby Go. Recently, I had a request in the comments to review Twisby Go in a fine nib because this is the pen that I recently got. I've had my Twisby Eco in medium forever and I always wondered how the Twisby writes when it's in fine nib versus medium nib. I love my medium nib. It's very smooth, it's very juicy and because of that it writes really well on regular notebook paper like this notebook paper I believe in 120 GSM not necessarily Tomoe River paper and I really love Loved it but because it is medium it does release a lot of ink and sometimes it felt almost too juicy or the thickness of the letters were a bit too wide and because I've been writing a lot in smaller notebooks and in Hobonichi paper that has a very small grid I wanted to see if I can get Twisby in a fine nib and you know give it a try and hoping that it will be just as wonderful as the Twisby in medium nib. So when I decided to get a Twisby in a fine nib I also wanted to try something different. Yes I love Twisby Eco. I think it's a wonderful pen and I know I'll be getting a different colors of this a few more pens in the future but I also came across Twisby Go in one of the videos I was watching and I was really intrigued by it and I thought it was so cool. So let's go over uh, two of these pens and kind of compare and contrast um, both uh, their features and then we're going to do a pen test and I'll let you know what I think about their writing abilities. All right, so let's review Twisby Eco first. So this is Twisby Eco. Uh, this one is in black. As you can see, this part is black, this part is black, and otherwise it's a clear demonstrator pen. If I open it, you can see it is clear all end to end except the end and the cap. And I've had this pen for probably 10 years, if not more. Um, I got it from Goulet Pens. I believe it was either first or second fountain pen I've ever owned um, in the last, I don't know, how many years. So I have like a special sentimental attachment to it as well. And as you can see, uh, in basically decade, it looks fantastic. It looks like I just got it. Um, it withstood the test of time. It writes wonderfully. It holds the ink wonderfully. Uh, the advantages of this pen is that it has this huge barrel. It also doesn't dry up. I've had this ink in here for probably over a year and I'm still able to write with no problem. It doesn't dry. The nib doesn't dry. The ink doesn't evaporate. It is wonderful. So this particular pen is equipped with a twisting piston filling mechanism. Uh, so I'm not going to do it here because it has ink in it. But basically this part here, if you twist it, it will go down uh, all the way until it cannot no more. You put it inside of the ink bottle and then you twist it the other way around and it will pull the ink back up with it. So that's what uh, the twisting piston mechanism does. And because of its construction, it does not accept anything but bottled ink. The pen is uh, the way it is. As you see it, you cannot take it out and for example, put a ink cartridge or anything like that because this is lit how the pen is constructed. So if you love pens that go from being used with cartridge, being used with converter, this might not be a pen for you, but I think it's wonderful just the way it is. Uh, some people don't like cartridges because they can be messy when you try to put them in, take them out and so on. They run out a little bit faster. As I mentioned, this pen has a huge barrel and if you have an ink that you love, this is a perfect pen for you because once you fill it in, it will just go on forever until you use it all up. So another thing I guess to consider if you're kind of person that likes to re-ink your pens often, uh, this might be kind of pain about because um, it actually, you know, this, this feature, this advantage of it that it lasts and holds the ink really well and doesn't dry out might go against your desire to you know swap ink all the time uh, but um, again if you are one of those people who loves a certain ink and you use this pen all the time and you use the same color of ink in your journal or in your other documents and you want to be able to rely on this pen 
have it with you all the time not worry that you're gonna run out of ink in the middle of your work this is a perfect pen and just a couple other notes uh, it has this black uh, kind of a sectagon shaped cap uh, it has the little twisby red logo here and it is a twist on cap so if you annoyed by having to twist on twist just something to know uh, but at the same time I think it's a really nice feature because it keeps it really tight it prevents it from drying out and it also you don't have to worry that it will ever fall off because it's really on there and because it is wider than this end you can definitely post it and write while it's posted I really like this pen as you can see it looks great after all these years it works wonderfully and uh, when you buy this pen it comes in a box um, it's kind of a substantial box so it makes for a great gift I don't have it on hand I do know that I have it because I'm one of those people that keep all the boxes but when you get it it will look something like this this is not a Twisby box but it will look kind of like this and it will have a nice red inside to match the red Twisby logo and inside it will have all of your instruction how to take care of your pen as well as some tools so Twisby Eco comes with a, this little wrench again classy red twisby color and a little bottle of grease and what it is needed for is when you want to clean your pen thoroughly because of its design you will need your wrench to basically unscrew it properly and then put it back on um, I have never done it just because I honestly do not want to mess with the perfection uh, I use only this ink in here ever and if I ever needed to I will just clean as thoroughly as I can and maybe just use inks in the same family if you ever want to put it apart uh, you will use use the wrench and then you will use the grease to secure it so it doesn't leak after you put it back together I have a lot of pens I love them but yeah in the case of fire as they said if I would run out of the house I would definitely grab this one because I had it for a very long time and it's a wonderful pen so next one let's review uh, this pen this is Twispy Go in clear and has a fine nib as you can see it is completely clear there are no other colors here except your Twisby red top here on the cap but otherwise it is all see-through and that's one of the things that attracted me to it because I do have several bottle inks and I really love uh, demonstrator pens as you saw from my other Twisby I like to see the ink in it I think it adds to the uh, beauty of the pen and you can you know it changes the color depending on what ink you have in here as you see in here I have a turquoise type of ink and so it adds that color to the pen instead of um, you know being just clear and if I put burgundy ink it will be you know on that side and if I add orange or green or black or whatever it will change its color with the ink that is inside of it and I thought it was really cool so Twisby Go is a smaller shorter pen than Twisby Eco as you can see not a lot but just a bit it is shorter so I like that fact as well as I mentioned I just got it so I cannot tell you how it will hold up for the period of 10 years so we cannot compare that but it is a Twisby product it feels just as solid and wonderful as Twisby Eco and I'm very excited about having it so just as soon as you get it you can see this giant spring in here another thing that appealed to me I thought it was a really cool feature so what this is is this pen has a spring loaded plunger filling mechanism meaning you do not load it the way eco is when you twist it this one is literally you grab the pen like this after you untwist of course the top and take this off and it's empty hopefully <laughs> you push it all the way down you put it in the ink bottle and then you let it go and then it will the spring will bring it back up and it will suck in the ink and you have it loaded I personally noticed that it loads better if you do it a few times to kind of bring up a little bit more ink so not just one time just try to do it you know one two three kind of times and it will fill in uh, so it has a large barrel just like a lot of Twisbees do um, as you can see I guess let me have them side by side 
Uh, as you can see, barrel on this one is just a little bit taller, just because the pen itself is taller. So you will be able to have more ink in here, but this one still has a really big barrel uh, for uh, the size of a pen. As you can see, this one, the plastic on this one is slightly different from here to here. This one is this kind of a glassy clear plastic like the regular Twisby has, and this one is a little bit frosted, and it's also smoother to touch. I don't know, it's nicer to hold than, for example, this one it's kind of like there's a tiny more give I don't know if it does or I'm just imagining but I like holding it it's just it's, it's almost like gives me feel like it's a, a resin treated plastic you know what I mean so it has a little bit of a softer feel even though it's not soft I hope I'm making sense here. So this one has a snap-on cap instead of a twist on. So you can see this one is made out of clear uh, plastic. This one is actually slightly different plastic than this or this. Uh, it feels a little bit thinner than this one. So I guess be careful because um, I've heard from some people that some twisties have a tendency of cracking if you force them too much. Uh, I'm always very gentle with my writing instruments, so hopefully I don't run into this, but um, this clear plastic, you just put it on and then you just push it and it snaps on. Very tight fit. Um, I would imagine being a Twisby pen, it is designed to also hold it really sealed in and not let it dry out, um, not let the ink to evaporate. Uh, also another cute thing, so as you can see, this one doesn't have the clip to attach it to your notebook but instead it has this little thing here and it's basically for you to put like a lanyard through so you can wear it around your neck so it's kind of like um, it, I mean that's why it's called Twisby Go it is meant for you to take it on a go with you you know have it hanging around your neck or however you choose to carry it with you uh, I thought it was kind of neat uh, that it had that little feature with it and um, I suspect that the snap-on cap was made for that reason too because if you have twist on and then you carry it around and it kind of like rattles around your neck it is possible that it will twist off over time and fall out I think that's just what I'm thinking, not necessarily what was the thought be behind it. I just suspect that maybe that was the reason. And uh, this one, just like the Twisby, has a steel nib. Um, as I mentioned, this one has a fine nib. Just like Twisby Eco, it uses bottled ink only. As you see, this is the design of the pen. You cannot really, you know, take parts out and put cartridge in. This is the design. It has this plunger in here, spring loaded. This is the barrel and you know, you, you basically use it with ink bottle only. Again, as I mentioned with Eco, I love that fact. I have bottled ink. I'm not afraid of using them. I've used them my whole childhood. So it's actually exciting because you can really play with the pen and load different inks into it because you can use them out of the bottles uh, and change them often, not worrying about, you know, did I use out my cartridge or not? This one, unlike Twisby Eco, comes in a small box. Uh, it is right here in this really cute, interesting design box. And you just slide it out. And it's just the Twisby in it with this little thing that holds it in place as so. And then you have your instructions on how to load in the ink. And then you slide it back in. It's really cute. Uh, I think it's really interesting a way to uh, package a pen and as you imagine uh, there are no tools that come with it um, it's probably not meant to be unscrewed when it's clean and just clean it by uh, using the plunger same way but just with clean water so because of the way these pens come pre-packaged and the features that they have and materials they use uh, Twisby Eco is slightly more expensive so this one at the current time on jet pens this pen costs $35 and this one is $19.50, so about $20. Uh, very inexpensive. Granted, some people might think that $20 for a pen is a bit too much, but I think it's pretty good price, especially for a brand like Twisby. This one is almost twice as much as this one. Again, you saw different features, different strength. Um, I still think even for $35, it's an excellent pen. There are pens that cost more than that, that not I'm not as excited about as this one. If you want to try out Twisby, you can definitely start with this one because it's only 20 bucks. Of course, um, you do need to have bottle ink on hand because neither of these come with any ink uh, with them. So if you're planning to use either Twisby Eco or Twisby Go, you would need to own some ink already or buy an ink a bottle. So now the moment of truth, 
what I think about the writing abilities because you know looks are great and everything but if your pen is not you know pleasant to write with then that kind of goes out of the window so let's review how both of these write so here I have just a regular notebook uh, it is this one of these really thick notebooks a bit of like 400 pages or something I use it for journaling because I don't have to worry about running out of pages because it just goes on forever and uh, this one is a slightly off-white paper with a dot grid and I believe it's 120 GSM I'll put link to it and all other items in the description down below um, I love these super thick notebooks you don't see me in my videos too much because all I do is just dump my thoughts into here kind of morning pages slash I had a crazy day and I just need to write this all out on paper and because this is not a Hobonichi paper in the beginning I just used a regular ballpoint pen or uh, a gel pen to write in here but then I thought wait this paper feels thick enough maybe it will handle fountain ink and it actually does um, I don't know if you can see but over here I have pages written out in this pen and also I wrote some in this pen as you can see pages upon pages of this particular ink and on this side it doesn't bleed much I mean it actually only goes there is no bleeding as you can see um, and this one was done in this pen so right now this pen is loaded with um, diamine uh, steel blue it's like this turquoise color I think it's gorgeous I when I got a clear pen, I was like, I have to load it <laughs> with this ink so I can see it, just because it's one of my favorite colors. Uh, this pen is loaded with the Atramentis Abergine ink, and it's in this uh, dark purple kind of a color. And I love this color because, well, first of all, I was in love with purple for like years and years. And also uh, when I was in school, uh, our whole school life, we were only allowed to use fountain pens and they were all in this kind of a purple ink. Not detrimentous, but this kind of like a dark purple ink. So I like it for like, you know, sentimental <laughs> kind of reasons. And so this is what in these two pens. So now makes, I guess, my comparisons not exact. So my apologies uh, when I run out of this ink I will load it up with this one and try and to see how that compares but so far what I can see is this because this ink is lighter and also I suspect that maybe diamine inks are on a little bit drier side that they are tremendous again don't come after me I'm not a ink specialist is just what I experience when I'm writing the feel I get from the ink um, and of course this is a fine nib versus we have the Atramentus here and we have a medium nib and mediums on uh, Ecos, on Twisby Ecos uh, to be honest with you feel almost like kind of like bigger than medium I don't know what the next size would be not a stub nib but you know definitely thicker than your other medium pens would feel and because of that it writes way more juicier than this one yes this is medium this is fine but what you can see is here right you can see just a little bit of ghosting right you don't see any bleed through but if I show you page on the back of the page where I wrote with this ink and this pen you will see that it is bleeding like there is a bleeder, not severe, but it's definitely more um, more obvious than the one with this ink and this nib. Now, here's what I've noticed when I was writing with these. It's kind of a, uh, interesting. That's why I'm wondering if I load it with the Atramentus, how it will behave. When I write with Twisby Eco in Medium, as I said, it is a very juicy, a very smooth writing pen. So let's write, I don't know, Twist Beagle in black with medium nib in, oops, purple ink. Okay, as you can see how juicy and dark and why these lines are sorry for my terrible handwriting i hate writing under pressure i actually have a good <laughs> handwriting otherwise see how dark it is and how wide and you could hear when i'm writing you don't hear much scratching because it's really just glides over and then when i write in this one so this one is 
to USB go in uh, let's see it's still blue in fine nib and oh this is actually clear my apologies uh, and this one is in still blue ink as you can see you can hear a little bit more scratch but still because it is um, obviously a regular paper and not really smooth Hobonichi paper the Tomoe River paper as you can see obviously it is a fine nib so the writing is thinner than the one above it but of course it is not as fine as Japanese fine pens it's still it can look actually like a medium from a Japanese maker but again it is very smooth very um, enjoyable writing now besides the obvious here what I was doing to test these out because the request was to how does it feel to write with a fine nib I actually wrote pages and pages with this pen what I've noticed is this and it can be probably because I was writing a lot and also really fast because I'm a fast writer is when I start writing with this pen it writes really juicy so the first like paragraph will be nice and dark and then as I write more, I feel it's getting drier and drier and drier and drier. It never goes like faded or anything like that. As you can see, I don't have any places here where it faded out or I had to like rewrite. Sorry, I don't want to like stop on these pages because of some uh, personal stuff in there. But I felt at times where I had to stop and then just like let it catch up. So that's the feeling that I got. I got the feeling that this pen constantly trying to catch up with my speed of writing um, that if I wanted to always be consistent and juicy I have to either write less or I have to write slower and if you are a slow writer especially when you're trying to do like a calligraphy you know really even pretty handwriting you will never notice it you just won't because it will always be in speed you know in step with you but because I write really fast, you know, I just go on and on and on, especially, you know, when you have thoughts flowing, you just like run with it. Um, like I said, every like two, three paragraphs, it felt like it was getting drier and drier and drier to the point when um, it's not, again, it was not getting white or dry that I couldn't see the ink. It just was not as smooth as I would love it to be. So I would just stop and pause a little bit and then start writing again. And it was, you know, back, <laughs> back on its horse. In contrast, if you write with a Twisby, especially in this ink, I suspect the ink has something to do with it as well. I always feel like I am trying to catch up to the pen. So pen is very juicy, very dark, and I always trying to write faster so it doesn't, so it doesn't release as much ink, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So it's kind of like um, this one, has to catch up with me and with this one I have to catch up to it I have to write fast enough so then it doesn't I don't want to say it doesn't ever blotch and like it doesn't splatter the ink or anything like that but it is really juicy it's almost writing I don't know what it compared to like the gel pen I guess uh, I'm not big fan of like jelly rolls but maybe something like this you know when you have a lot of ink coming out um, so if you're a person who writes super fast um, likes your letters to be really dark and full of ink definitely this one if you're a slower writer and you want your letters to be nice and not too uh, juicy and then also obviously not bleed as much through definitely this pen in fine nib so medium for this fine for this so these are my impressions so far all i have to say though is do not misunderstand me i love this pen i think it's freaking amazing <laughs> i think it's adorable I think it's really pretty how it's designed and it's really neat to look at and have around and as you can see from my pages yes I was doing it for testing purposes but every night or during the day when I journal I just go for this pen I really enjoyed uh, writing with it maybe it's also the ink that I'm using because I love this color but it's such a pleasure to write with and because it is fine and it's not you know giving out so much ink like this one i don't feel like i'm overwhelmed by my pen i don't feel like i have to catch up to it or worry that it will release too much ink and bleed through because there is so much going on 
and even though like it you know it is uh, trying to catch up to me when i'm riding too fast and too furiously basically i still would recommend it like hands down if you're considering twisby in fine nib and you especially considering go um, get it you will not regret it i mean first of all it's a 20 dollar pen uh, second of all, it is very interesting to look at if you are in the company of other people, they'll definitely notice it and be like, wow, what is this? This is really cool. Um, of course, really cute that you can put, uh, you know, lanyard on here and carry it with you. I don't know if this little loop can handle, um, you know, long wear and tear. So I don't have mine. I have it always with me here with my journal. So I don't feel a need to do that. Um, some people might missed having the clip I know it might be a downside uh, but I really love it I love that it posts um, I don't shove it you know hard I just put it on a slower because I know that these might crack I've heard that from you know some other people that it might be a concern but I really love it it's it's a really nice writer as you can see see how weighted and how dark it is and um, I love it. it it's very smooth great nib uh, I do not regret it. I, I love it. I actually found one just like that, but with a, a clear blue plastic body. So it's clear here, but then a clear blue over here. So I'm thinking to get that one. I'm actually considering to maybe get this one in medium and see how they compare to each other. And then also have this one in fine. Uh, there is one with turquoise top, which um, I had my eye on forever. It's collectible, so it's not available everywhere, but I've seen it in one of the stores, so I have my eye on it. So then it'll be really a true test, and I guess it'll be even truer test if they all have same ink in them. But um, all in all, I love both of these. Both of these are my favorites. I'll definitely have them in my top 10 of all times. Uh, recommend recommend again as I mentioned they have different properties depending on your personal preference if you like pen just flows like a river and are very smooth it gives you ink with no you know reserve definitely this one especially in medium um, if you like your pen to be uh, you know uh, well behaved when it comes to ink and release just as needed especially if you want to try to write in regular notebooks definitely use this one and fine I uh, tried the uh, diamine ink maybe that's also part of the trick but uh, as you can see even writing here two samples you can clearly see the ink and the pen on the top right you can see it's literally like 90% bleeding through <laughs> like it's air uh, it's dark uh, it shows really really well I mean I don't know if that's well it's dark uh, it shows really distinctly here versus uh, this area with all the loops and scribbles that I did in the other pen and the other ink you can barely see it and that is the difference right between these two pens and again it can be because it is medium nib it can also be because that ink is juicier and darker uh, but again if you want to write just in regular notebooks you know, the Twisby Go in fine with a diamond ink is definitely a trick to use. So there you have it. Two wonderful pens, one in medium, one in fine nib from a great maker, Twisby. And uh, this one is Eco. This one is a Go. And I love them both. They have different properties that can work differently. Depends on your preference. I think they are great pens. As I mentioned, I want to get this one and this one in different colors and different nib sizes because I do love these pens, so I would love to have more of them in my collection. I appreciate the quality. I appreciate the craftsmanship that Twisby puts in their pens. And if you've been considering getting either of these, I recommend you will not regret it. Plus, they are very affordable for a fountain pen of this quality. $20 versus $35. I think both of these are really good investment. So I hope you enjoyed this little review. And if you like these type of videos, please like and subscribe. Leave me a note in the comments below which one of these is your favorite. Do you own any of these and which colors and what is your favorite ink to use with these babies? Please leave me a comment and thank you for being here and I'll see you in the next video. You take care.